Welcome to Decode Your Body. I'm Steve Brophy, and in this video, I'll be sharing practices and knowledge to help you decipher your body signals about how it is doing. To start, we're going to take a look at the nervous system. The nervous system is our body's communication system and is responsible for so many things. Intelligence, learning and memory, movement, automatic body functions such as blinking, responding to an emergency, and the senses. In fact, there isn't much in our body that is not directly impacted by the nervous system. So having a nervous system in good working order is really a high priority. The nervous system works to keep us safe and sound in this wild world we live in. Interoception is the technical term for learning how to decode these signals. In this video, we're going to explore stress and the impact on our bodies and learn strategies to diffuse and reduce the impact of these stresses on our lives. The goal here is not to eliminate stress from our life, but to build out a toolkit for coping and moving from survival to thrival. So let's first begin with the roles that the two branches of our autonomic nervous system play. They are the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system keeps us alive at any cost and will mobilize the body for activity. This is what gets us up and moving in an emergency and is often called our fight or flight response. The parasympathetic nervous system cleans up and rebuilds the damage and is all about energy conservation. It is our rest and digest response. We need both to survive, but the key here is balance between the branches. Biologically, this has been the case for thousands of years. In fact, we, we spent more time relaxed and conserving energy in the past, only to switch to our sympathetic nervous system when threatened by a predator. In today's always on era, we've turned the tables on our nervous system, and now we spend more time in a heightened and agitated state. If you take a look at the physical effects of each branch of the nervous system, it will give you a blueprint for the default mode you're operating in. These are the clues as to which branch of your autonomic nervous system is activated. If you have excessive saliva in your mouth, or you know that you are in a rest and digest state, or if you have an accelerated heartbeat, it's telling you that you are, your sympathetic nervous system branch is activated. These clues are the first signs, the, the first signals of an interoceptive awareness. Now what causes the stress? What causes the overwhelm? Stress as we know it has only really been in our language since about the early 1940s. But since then psychologists have made great strides in understanding the process of stress in our minds and bodies. The first reaction is largely out of our control. It's an automatic reaction and it's a threat assessment. So our body quickly makes a call on whether this is a threat. The second reaction is an internal reaction where we ask ourselves a question. Do I have the coping strategies to cope with this stressor? And it is this stage that leads to good stress or to bad stress. Our perception of our ability to cope is the key. If we perceive that we have enough in the tank to meet to the demands, the stress leads to great performance. If we don't, we end up in the land of distress. We need stress in our lives. Too little is in fact a stressor as well. So let's reclaim the language. Professor Hans Selye, who was considered the godfather of stress, on his deathbed said his one regret with the word that he'd given to the world was he didn't really like it. It came with emotional baggage. He in fact preferred the word strain. So throughout the rest of this presentation, we're gonna use strain instead of stress. We're gonna look at excessive strain instead of excessive stress, because what it gives us is the ability to keep the experience objective. We can hold it at a distance and we can keep our internal narratives away from it. A powerful metaphor to help you look at strain in your life is the barbell metaphor. Adding plates of strain leads to an accumulation of pressure. 
if we work out at the gym and we add plate upon plate upon plate, we know that after a short period of time, we're gonna max ourselves out. And that's the same way that you can look at strain in your life. If you have excessive strain in a multitude of areas, and here are just a few of them, financial, physical, work, digestive, mental, emotional, relationships, and environmental. If you walk from a, you know, a horrible meeting at work through to a, an emotionally charged conversation with your partner, you are bringing those plates to your barbell. Now, while that can feel overwhelming at times, it also gives us the ability, using this metaphor, to understand the way that I cope with it is very similar to the way that you would cope with a physical stress in the gym. You either improve the physical fitness to be able to carry the weight, or you reduce the strains, you take plates off. So this, as a metaphor, allows you to look at the strain categories that I have on the screen here, so financial and physical, and do a really big audit. Where in my life am I carrying these throughout the day? Is there something that I can do about this? Can I put this strain down? Can I put strategies in place to build out my coping strategies? So how much is the right weight to get on your barbell? There is an optimal amount of stress or strain to carry in our lives. What you see on the screen is called Yerkes Dodson Law. And as you can see from the bottom, as the stress or strain increases, you start to see an improvement in performance up to a certain point. So this is like the Goldilocks principle, where our optimal performance, or was what is often known as our flow state, is reached when we get the strain conditions just right. But if that strain keeps up and we don't find ways to take plates off and reduce the amount of strain that we're under, we end up in the land of distress which leads from fatigue, exhaustion, ill health, right down to breakdown and burnout. So the keys for optimal performance is knowing how much to carry on your barbell and when and how to take plates off. This is where interoception comes into play. So a really quick way that we can do this is through a body scan. Nobody else has your inner experience. So tuning into the signals that your body gives is the first sign to say, hey, how much am I carrying on my barbell? And a great way to do this is to try to make the habit linked to a habit that you already have in existence. So personally, when I go to make myself a coffee, I add a body scan in with some breath work. And what that means is when I'm going to have that coffee, and maybe it's twice a day, I pause and I check in. Where am I holding tension? What's happening in my jaw? What's happening with my tongue? We hold a lot of tension in our tongue. How am I feeling? Am I warm? Asking a lot of these questions and just checking in and noticing where you're carrying tension is a really important virus scanner for noticing how much strain you are carrying. Now the biggest contributor to control of our nervous system is our breath. Our breath is one of the only elements in our body that is both autonomic and in conscious control, which means our breath just goes on about its day without us, but we also can take control. We can drive for a period. So a breath is the first key to regulating a lot of the signals that our body gives us. So this technique is called box breathing. Developed by the Navy SEALs to develop their capacity to manage stress, and so thinking about the stress and strain that a Navy SEAL would be under on the battlefield, they created a technique called the box breath. The box breath is really quite simple. You breathe in for a count, you hold your breath for a count, you breathe out for a count, and then you hold for a count. So this little recording here on the screen is for a count of four. And over time, as you build up your capacity, you can increase that number to go up to nine, 10, 11, 12, whatever it is. And it's designed to micro stress your body. So to put it under a little bit of pressure and then recover. So this is set for a count of four, so you can follow along.
So if we're in a sympathetic nervous system activation period, so we're in fight or flight, how do we balance the branches of our autonomic nervous system? How do we stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system to turn on? Well, this is where vagal nerve stimulation comes into place. So the vagus nerve is the largest cranial nerve and the only nerve that moves from the brain, outside the brain, through all the organs. And when we stimulate this nerve, we start to turn on the parasympathetic branch of our nervous system. So a powerful way to do this is through vagal breathing. And vagal breathing is really quite simple. So this little breath pacer here is going to take you through a count of in for four, out for double that, so out for eight, and then a hold at the bottom. So in for a count of four, out for a count of eight, and then a hold for a count of two. Another area of our body to pay attention to is our eyes. So much of our, the information in our world comes in through our eyes. And so the ability to shift and have flexible focus is a really powerful way to not only focus for extended periods of time, but also to find ways to reduce strain in your life. So there are many types of attention, many types of focus. But the two that we spend most of our time in is narrow, which is really laser focused, focused on a small screen, really intense, and after a period of time, our eyes feel really sore. And then the opposite of that is diffuse focus, which is where our eyes have no real focal point because the landscape that we're looking at is really, really big. So that's why when you go into nature or to the beach, you find that you're in a much more relaxed state because from a focus point of view, we've shifted from that narrow focus, which is really intense, to a diffuse focus. And narrow focus is often linked to a sympathetic nervous system because back in, in the days of the savannah in Africa, we would be narrow focused when a predator was coming in, but we would spend most of our days in that soft diffuse focus. So a really powerful technique to shift from narrow to diffuse is a technique called open focus. Developed by Les Fermi PhD, it takes the ability to de develop attentional flexibility. So on my screen and on your screen, you're going to notice a red target. So what I would like you to do is to focus on that red target. Now you'll notice that I've added two extra lines. The key to this exercise is to focus on the red target and then bring into vision the two blue lines. Now, can you look at the three of those things as one discrete image? So by softening our focus and looking at the edges, we are taking the whole space in. So for so many of us who spend all of our time on screens, on really narrow focus, this technique enables you to shift, to diffuse focus, reduce the strain that you're putting your eyes under and the strain you're putting your body under and breathing as well. So if you add in an extended exhale while you're doing this exercise, you're prom promoting parasympathetic nervous system activity. So a powerful way to do this is to look at what's on your screen and then soften your gaze and can you take in what's on the edges. And you can only, you can do this from time to time, just 
to give your eyes a break, but after a while you'll start to notice that you will have soft eye focus, you'll have an open focus. And this same focus is what you'll see on the faces of Olympic athletes. They're not intense laser eye focus, they're soft, allowing their body to perform and be relaxed so that their training can allow them to perform optimally. Now the key to all of this is not to add an extra plate to your barbell about things that you need to do. It is to take the body awareness scans. It's to take all of the pieces that we shared in this video and pick one. Pick the first domino. What can I do today that will enable me to start to cope with the stresses that are showing up in my life? And can I do that habitually and ritually? And then once I have that domino, then I'm gonna pick up another piece and then another piece. And after a while, you're gonna to start to see that your coping toolkit is built out and really extensive so that when you're under strain, you have the fitness to be able to cope with the signals that are being put upon you, but also you have the ability to rise to the challenge. Hope you enjoy this video. There is a, a handbook that goes with it just to allow you to move through and activate your learning. And once again, start with the one domino and really assess where you're at and look after yourselves.